Today we are going to represent our pro project, which is, which is called Analysis of Social Networks in Drama. And uh, uh, many people uh, think that the anal process of analyzing has been, uh, has risen recently, but it's not true. Uh, it has been rising for many years. And um, um, <coughs> uh, our task is to show you uh, that uh, we can um, do research in the sphere of philology uh, with help of Gaffey and the uh, distant reading. And um, uh, the first person who uh, was included uh, in this, mm, these methods of uh, researching is uh, Boris Isakovich Yerko. Um, and um, uh, he was uh, a Russian philologist and a historian and a uh, medievist and fol folklorist. Um, but uh, all uh, his studies were uh, not accepted and uh, uh, not understood because uh, of uh, uh, disagreement uh, with socialist uh, uh, ideas mm. and one of the most uh, uh, famous and important book uh, uh, of uh, uh, this scientist is uh, methodolo methodology of exact literary criticism um, it is very important because uh, it is very important for formalism um, and uh, nowadays we can uh, do the same as uh, Yerho uh, by our hands and our computers uh, because of development in sphere of uh, computer technologies, digital technologies. So actually we came to the idea when uh, we had a philological uh, lecture. Yes, so we, ha uh, we had to read one of the articles of Boris Yerho. Um, uh, many years ago, it was very hard to, uh, he, was, he was not actually, um, at a, um, he uh, didn't uh, open uh, the methods of distant reading, but uh, he was uh, one of the first Russian persons uh, who started to um, work with uh, distant reading. Uh, the idea of this article was uh, to um, count, uh, it's actually hard to <laughs> explain in English, um, um, his idea, the ideas of this book were to find out the evolution of, uh, evolution of literature, uh, that, uh, and he had to um, say that uh, the evolution of literature is kind of smooth. It, didn't, uh, it doesn't jump, jump, but it's smooth. Uh, he, was, uh, um, he opened new methods in literature and uh, he had to kind of uh, mathematize all these um, methods. Uh, that's why he had many confrontations with another uh, um, learners and with uh, another uh, scientist because um, uh, they thought that we had to have close reading. But Yerho had, uh, he thought that we can um, ca uh, just uh, see the actors in the drama and we can um, count the places of uh, take, uh, taking places and we can count um, heroes and characters and how many times they uh, speak to each other. Uh, so actually all this book uh, isn't just about mathem uh, mathematization, it's about biology, geography, and all of these things. Uh, so he really wanted to make a continuum of uh, um, philology and of science. Um, yes. Yeah, so the main idea of uh, this article is to compare sentimentalism and romanticism. So he uh, had um, had to uh, he had a lot of uh, drummers of uh, Russian and of uh, 
German, uh, French uh, dramas, and he um, just uh, counted how many. So the main trait of uh, comparing is uh, to count how many how many times characters speak to each other. Yeah. So the uh, whole article uh, consists of uh, many many uh, tables, tablets. Um, with person, a percent of uh, talking to each other, with percent of <coughs> um, characters, and so uh, he just compares a lot, uh, a lot of uh, uh, different dramas. Um, the thing is, so many uh, that time, so it's the middle of uh, 20th century, maybe 70s. Um, it was very hard to count all of these things. So this work took a lot of time, and he was uh, he was very hard working. Uh, but now it's much easier to do this uh, with Gaethje. That's why we uh, trying to um, to explain uh, why now distant reading is really important for us, and why the methods of Yo Ho are really working. So. Yes, uh, the conclusions of uh, his article, after all of these counts and uh, uh, all of this mathematization, were that um, classicism, uh, we, can, we can just uh, miss reading of uh, all of these dramas, but after just looking at the text, we can find out that uh, classici classicism and romanticism uh, have many of differences. Such as in classicism, there, are a lot of, uh, there is a priority of dialogue, uh, of actually dialogue in Russian, which is two person talk on the uh, stage, uh, and um, he thinks that classicism is um, kind of tra uh, transitional epoch between antiquity and uh, ancient time and romanticism. Uh, so, in uh, uh, after counts, uh, he found out that romanticism uh, has a decreasing interest of uh, dialogue and. Um, uh, Increasing interest of uh, polylog and of monologue, like one person is standing on the stage and talking to himself. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, we'll we'll get back to these uh, conclusions, but now we think that uh, so our work was uh, to compare two dramas. Uh, we so I think you can. Um, so we took the ideas of your uh, exact methods and try to continue, and we decided to compare two plays. One, um, uh, written by Sonorokov, uh, Dimitris Mazvanets, and the second one, written by Pushkin, but it's good enough. Um, the idea of the horse method is really close to what we are doing during our project, um, but of course, the main difference is that your whole makes everything manually, and we have computers and the program gateway, which really helps us. Um, so, um, um, now I'll try to explain how um, this program uh, helped us. So, what we have done. Uh, we have counted how much um, each person speaks in every action of the play. Then we um, put the information in the Excel and counted how much each person uh, talked to each other, so how many dialects uh, they have. And uh, here yeah, I could see at least how it uh, really looks. And uh, then we put our information from the CSV file to the GAP, and here we can see a graph. And uh, the graph can show us uh, the structure of the play, and now we can analyze how different characters in different plays uh, communicate to each other. And for example here, um, <laughs> this one is Dmitri. And we can see that this character has uh, more links than every other character, and uh, that's how we can understand that he is the main, uh, the central character of the play. Um, but of course, uh, such um, such uh, method has uh, its um, um, disadvantages. Uh, for example, in Bed is Good Enough. Um, there, uh, there are some moments when Pushkin called the same character different uh, names, for example, and you really have to understand what is going on in the play. 
Because, for example, he names uh, Grigori first Grigori, and then he turned to Samozvanit. And if we don't know that this is the same person, we could get uh, the wrong graph. Um, also, uh, what I found uh, also difficult is that there are a lot of uh, characters which are named in the beginning of the action, but they didn't say a word, they're just standing on the stage. And uh, also, in Boris Godunov, there are such um, type of characters like Narod, and uh, we don't know who is exactly is, and sometimes they are speaking all together, and sometimes he um, named them like Aydin, Drugoi, Treti, and this is, uh, I guess, is also a difficult question how to show it on the graph. Um, but anyway, um, when we got uh, our graphs, we can compare the structure of uh, the play of uh, classicism and romanticism and see that the structure is really different. And uh, here there are much more characters and the structure is really more difficult to understand than the play of uh, Svarovka. Yeah, so actually we took these places because uh, it was um, just nice to compare uh, two places uh, that are written on the same topic, <coughs> about the same epoch, and how uh, the author of uh, sentimentalism uh, imagined this, and how the author of romanticism imagined this. So now we can uh, turn uh, go back to the conclusions, conclusions and uh, find out that uh, all of these uh, conclusions of your Ho uh, just work with our graphs such as, uh, yes, there are much uh, more characters in Romanticism and much less characters in Classicism. There are much more places of, uh, uh, of act uh, in the Romanticism and less in, Roman, uh, in Classicism. And uh, yes, in Romanticism, I will go back, we can see a lot of um, mm, uh, much more characters and some of them even, didn't, uh, even don't talk to each other, so they just um, but they work in polylogue, and they talk in polylogue, um, and we can't see this. Uh, we can't see this in classicism. So actually, uh, if there were no the work of your Ho, and we could do all of this work right now, um, in the time of digital technologies and the time of uh, Gaffey and working with this, uh, we could find out all of these conclusions and say that uh, your Ho was actually right, um, but. Um, nowadays, it's just um, easier to work with this program and it's easier to uh, find out another uh, topics of literature evolution, such as compare uh, different epochs and um, just work with this. And in the conclusion, we have to say that uh, you all know Moretti because I think that uh, you all read it. Uh, he was one of the actually followers of. Uh, your ho and he has some allusions in his work he has some allusions for your ho so I guess uh, it's all and thanks for your attention uh, yeah another great work uh, you know I could say the same what I said about the presentation before and additionally this goes right into the research group that we have on Russian, Russian drama we have been discussing the same questions just yesterday uh, and it might be good to kind of at some point share what we found there but anyway, uh, questions? Uh, what was the, um, the link between the two characters? how did you count them? Um, well, for example, uh, you have uh, an action, and then you see which ch uh, characters are talking there. And you listen to another action and see if there um, these two characters uh, talk to each other again. And uh, we just listed all the pairs of characters, and then we just uh, counted here. Okay, they took, uh, they have talked once, then twice, then uh, three times, and something like that. Yes, Yes, uh, but uh, this is the work we, that we really have to do manually. And uh, sometimes it's really difficult to understand, for example, in the beginning of the action, the characters are named, but for example, one character speaks to all others, but uh, except one. And uh, this is why 
the method of distant reading is not really working every time because you really need to understand if these two characters are really to, to have talked to each other or not. So you counted interactions, not just appearance in the same act? Yes, it, only interactions. They how to speak to each other. Did you use this uh, visualization tool for this? Or? Uh, yes, the, this is the visualization visualization of how they communicate to each other. No, I mean, how did you formalize it? Did you use this web interface that we did, or did you do? It, how did you get the CSV data? I did it uh, according to that. In, in, in. Right. Uh, well, we refers to everything in uh, Excel, then we yeah. uh, turned it to C. CSV <laughs> file. Um, How did you do that? Did you use this as Lina this tool? Uh, with the help of the oh, right, right. With this tool. Well, actually, the, I mean, uh, <laughs> the thing is, uh, the girls did made this form. I mean, they made right what we asked them to do. I mean, they made this uh, in this format that you could upload to Lina Yes. Except, I mean, there were some issues, like you know, okay, yeah. some some missing. Uh, Shotgun mm -hmm. stuff. So I mean, I just you know made one single replace there and then uh, put it myself to Linovis and then I mean they uh, okay, too, too. and then sure. sent back the CSV. So I was sort of like an intermediary between Li Linovis and the girls. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean they did it themselves. I didn't really correct anything. <laughs> and just uh, I mean uh, I said we discussed this yesterday and in our research group on Russian drama we were trying to formalize it so that you don't have this problem anymore. So that you know that who Drugoi is, and we have to decide is that Drugoi this one scene, the same Drugoi in a different place, mm -hmm. although they have the same name. And then the question of Narod, I mean the Narod in the Moscow scene will be a different Narod than in the pub or something. Yes. But wasn't it Pushkin's idea to kind of give voice to Narod? You know, this is a question that when you formalize it, you should definitely know what you're doing there. You should discuss this before doing it, because all your results depend on this. Uh, we also formalized Godunov uh, last year in our summer school and our metrics will be different than yours because you have had other ideas in mind. Uh, that's why it was great that you kind of talked about how you did this because that's important because we get results, we get numbers, but what do they mean? They all rely on what we decided before formalizing, so great stuff. Yeah. I wonder if you could analyze the differences of roles uh, assigned to uh, the characters which appear both in Sumarokov's play and in uh, Pushkin's play, which is uh, which are I think Dmitri and Shuisky and Ksenia, yes. But um, I, I'm particularly interested in Shuisky because uh, you know I mean he's like the he's like very interesting a very interesting character in Pushkin's play. I mean he the the look how it's very who 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 actually I mean afterwards he becomes Russian Tsar, although it's not it's beyond the scope of. Uh, the place, but we know it from the history, right? And it's interesting how they were perceived differently. And I mean, to c just to compare the centralities of these characters would, could be interesting. And another interesting, uh, th I'm, I'm just you know thinking aloud here. Uh, another interesting thing is that actually in uh, the, this classicist play of by Sumarokov, uh, characters actually do address uh, Narod. They uh, they uh, we even have stage directions which claim that Georgi atstupiv i abratesh k narodu. So he addresses to Narod, but Narod is not a character. He is not on the cast list. He uh, it is not on the cast list, and it's it has no uh, lines, unlike Pushkin's Narod, which actually says things. Uh, but uh, it 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 um, uh, it is present there, and it's interesting to also to compare. And you can see it on the graph that uh, it's there's actually no separate node for Narod. But Narod is not completely uh, absent from classic play. It's just not not evolved yet into a separate character, and that's interesting. And uh, we have, I mean, there are several lines. Uh, you can actually count uh, the number of. I mean, the, the the Narod is actually mentioned 40, I think 42 times in Sumarokov's plays, although it's not a character. And sometimes it's just a mention, but sometimes they actually address Narod. Uh, and yes, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, we were trying to work with the work of. That's why we were trying to analyze um, types of uh, characters speak to each other. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. of course. I'm not saying That's you should have done it. No, I mean, what you did was, cr was perfectly correct. I'm just interested in, 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 in how we yeah. can e use this to also see this more subtle evolution of Narod. <laughs> yeah, great, thanks.
And another last note to Yako, uh, I was just talking to Marina Kimova who edited the stuff. She was actually the first one who actually saw the, the, his manuscripts after 60 years. And uh, she was really inspired by what we are doing, probably would be inspired by what you're doing as well. And our idea was to restage what uh, Yako did with, uh, like manually. He has 153 plays in the corpus. As you said, French, German and Russian plays. And we have most of them already in digital state, in a digital state, so it would be great to recalculate what he did, just to take the next step. And also, I mean, I also like that you, I mean, Yarko is my absolute hero of formalism, and I would like to help push him into the digital humanities, because this is visionary work, and just seeing the tables, that's exactly what we are doing, that he did with pencil and paper 60, 70 years ago. And we try to get this one translated to English, especially this one, Distribution of Speech Acts, because this, I mean, the world has to know it, I think. So, yeah. thanks for bringing this up. Yeah. So, that's it. Uh, so, we've seen two almost uh, full